Okie dokie, um, welcome back everybody, um, or whoever's watching. <laughs> Um, today is day 10 and I cannot believe that I've actually managed to get this far in the challenge. It has really been, um, well, apart from it being a challenge, because it has been at times, um, it has been really fun and I want to thank everyone for um, having been a part of it with me. So, without further ado, today is day 10, fishy canes. So, you can see I have my selection of fishy canes at the front here. And um, I thought that we could do a fairly simple fishy cane, but one of um, one of my favorites is this one, the dory fish. Um, I don't actually know what the fish is called, so that's why I call it a dory fish because Disney. Um, I will hopefully be able to show you how to. Um, make this cane from start to finish so bear with me because there's a lot of blends that go into this so it can get a bit tedious to watch me do the blends um but it's well worth it in the end so um yeah i also have a tutorial on um, my etsy shop um which will show you how to make these ones these little um clownfish so um, if you wanted to go and check that out, feel free to do that. There should be a link at the bottom of the video. Um, and I'm currently working on the angelfish tutorial as well, so keep an eye out for that. Um, so, of course, you can use these canes um, for just about anything, but what I like to use them for is creating... Um, um, like seascapes and scenes and things and then I put those either on pendants like this one here which is probably one of my favorites um, so it's got a little variety of all the fishies on there or I do little bowls like this one here so this is um, uh, slices of the cane just with resin to make the bowl um, and it's got some mm -hmm. beach sand in there from a beach in Sydney, I think. And some little seashells as well. So that's quite cute. And then the last thing that I have done with them, or at least the last thing that I'll show you that I've done with them, is these little pens. And as you can see, there's a... kind of looks like an aquarium, which is quite pretty. I like it. So, should we get to it? Um, as always, I'm going to be using my Primo clay because Primo is the best. Um, I will, as always, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat and I will try and answer those for you as we go. Um, shades of blue, black, white, yellow, and maybe even some purple is what I'll be using today oh and some brown for the eye so um, the first thing I'd advise you to do when going to build a complex cane or a cane that is supposed to look like something um, so in this case we want to achieve the fish which is a real fish you know you can look it up so um, if you want it to be recognizable um, for what it is then you need to or it's, I, it's advised to find some photos on the internet. Um, just, you know, Google images or whatever, and then you can find hundreds and thousands of, of images and just use those as a bit of a reference for when you're actually um, making your blends and even just building the, the cane itself. Um, okay, I think that's about it. I have a picture here next to me on my phone, but I won't, um, it's not my photo, I don't, I don't have the rights to use it, so I won't do that. Um, but yeah, just, just Google it and, and you know, you can, you can find heaps of pictures. Let me just open it for me so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I'm going to start with the bulk of the 
the fishy that we've got here, which is the blue body. Um, so, okay, my, my photo has disappeared. Never mind. What I like to do with these fish, even though it's um, not strictly speaking um, the perfect color scheme of the fish, I like to make the top part of the fish a little bit lighter and then the bottom half of the fish I like to make a bit darker. So, um, so I'll create a blend that has a little bit of white, a little bit of well, in this case, purple for the darker blue, and then the bulk of it would be blue. So I'm just going to draw that out quickly. So, starting off with a bit of purple, and then what's this ultramarine blue, cobalt blue. It's a bit too much white, so there. This one. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. I do. Um, I do have quite a lot of these blends, and in the fish tutorials or in any of my tutorials, the, if a blend is used in the tutorial, the um, the template will be there. But I'm also working on. Um, compiling some of my blend templates into some ebooks. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. Um, and I can keep you up to date with that. Okie dokie. Might be a bit too much. Okay. So we'll start with purple. Ultramarine. Cobalt. Uh, turquoise and white. Right. Um, scissors. Here we go. So there are a few different um, types of this particular fish. Um, I actually think it's called a tang, a blue tang. Well, I might be wrong. But anyway, there's a couple of different varieties of them and just look for some of the unique characteristics. So the one that I like is, has a sort of white spot on the tail, but there's another one that has a a really sharp triangular um, yellow tail. Um, purple, let me find some here. So I'm going to um, just make some sheets of the colors that I need and run that through my pasta machine on the thickest setting. Um, and then cut out these pieces, put them together and voila, blend. I don't um, make these canes very big because 
in the scale that I use them, I um, I have more than enough. This is even too big for what I use it for. I reduce them down to this. And so, you know, they I can get a lot of um, use out of even the small size that I make it in to start off with. And if I made it much bigger, I, I'm afraid I'd have fish canes for the rest of my life. Oopsies. Because who's organized? Okay, purple, ultramarine blue. I should have some here. can go out the way as well. Oh, maybe not.
actually feeling like there's not enough um, ultramarine in this. I'm just going to add a bit more.
Okay. So I've um, mentioned it before, but I'll just say it again. You always want to fold your blend in the same direction and you always want to put it into the pasta machine with the fold um, down. So in this direction. And always fold it in the same direction. So always bottom to top or top to bottom. Never this way. You always want to keep, if the purple is on the one side and the white's on the other, I always want to make sure that the purple and the white stay separate. I never want them to come together. Okay, that should be blended well enough. And I think that's perfect for my little fish body. I'm just going to set this to the side and then I'm going to do um, the, the top fin blend, which is a yellow one. Uh, let's see. So it's yellow and a bit of blue, some white. Okay, another little template, if I can find my pencil. Um, I did have it. Here it is. So, gross. Ooh, bug just flew into my hair. Um, So I am picking these colors and um, drawing these blends based on um, the colors in the picture that I'm using as a reference. So it's a um, it's just a photo that I found on on uh, through Google image search. Okay, cobalt blue. Just this one here. 
Um, so I've actually put the setting down on my pasta machine to from uh, the thickest one, which is number one, to a number four because I really just need um, enough of this blend to make the top fin and the little bit next to his tail. So. sandwich bags so that I can keep my blends together well they're not really sandwich bags but you know what I mean So um, obviously when we combine um, blue and yellow it will turn green, um, but hopefully it will still be true to what I'm looking for. So if it does blend too much I can always just add an extra little bit of blue to um, the um, block that will shape into the fin. So I'm not worried.
colors together just make me happy.
Okay, I think that one's done too. Um, let me have a look. What other balloons would we need? just going to use my square cutters so I need um, a black and white blend for the tail here and a pale blue and white blend for the bottom fin so they need to be even smaller than this top fin So I'm just going to make standard Skinner blends for these. Although I think turquoise might be a problem. I think I might do cobalt instead.
So I've actually taken a 50-50 um, turquoise and cobalt for this um, for this blend here. But this blend needs to only just join the black and white. I don't want a lot of grey. So I'm not going to put the um, the diagonal to a too extreme an angle. I'm going to make it practically straight. And apparently I didn't center it. Oh well. So this way, there's only going to be, you know, that much of the the white and the black that mix together and make a, a grey colour. The rest will be solid black and pure white. So it will just be this little bit here that blends. do nicely. Just do this one and then we can start building
Of course, if you wanted to build a fish cane or any cane really in fantasy colors, so you know, colors that might not necessarily appear naturally, um, there really is nothing stopping you as long as it makes you happy. There's one other thing that I need to build, one other element of this cane, before we can construct the cane proper, and that's the eye. So the eye is probably one of the simplest parts. I just need some brown clay, some black clay, and some white clay. I think this clay is a bit old, so it's um, a little bit crumbly. It's probably going to be a mission to condition. Haha, <laughs> poetry. as I thought it would be. Some black. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm just going to make a little sausage out of the black clay. Um, I really don't want to make this too big because um, well, I'm going to have tons of it left over anyway, and this is probably as small as I can go, um, at least on camera. But you can always um, just save the rest of this and use it for another fish if you're going to make, um, you know, a variety of fishies. Okay. Now I want to wrap the um, little black log in brown clay, so this will be the pupil. So I probably don't have enough brown clay. Now we've got a very, very basic eye. Um, I will need more brown clay, but before I do that, I'm just going to add a little um, oh, a fleck of light, or it just just a dot of white into this. Uh, it just really makes it come alive. It sort of. Um, this brings a bit of realism to something that's otherwise rather dull. 
So I've just cut a little triangle. And I'll just remove that. Um, obviously not a very straight triangle, but that's okay. <laughs> I can sort that out. And I'm actually just going to make a little white triangle that will fit into this um, hole that I just made there. I've made the corners quite sharp on this so that it um, stays clearly triangular rather than um, the sides or the pointy bit in the middle turning into a um, sort of a rounded edge. So there we go, and then I'm going to wrap another sheet or two of brown around this. So I don't want too much more um, brown wrapped around this because it will um, sort of um, become overwhelming if there's too much more brown. my pasta machine down to a thinner setting. And there we have it, there's a little fishy eye, well that's a huge fishy eye considering that um, that would be about the size of my fish's face, but never mind, we'll reduce it just now. Okay, so the first thing I want to do now that I have all the elements of this cane ready to go is um, take my body blend and um, turn it into a fan fold. So I'm just going to stretch this out um, into a, a ribbon and then um, do a fan fold. So. Someone gave me a lovely tip the other day 
um, for on hot days when the clay tends to stick to itself when doing this. Um, just pop a bit of wax paper underneath the pasta machine and um, that seems to reduce the possibility of it sticking to each other. That made no sense, but trust me, it works. <laughs> okay, this is still quite a thick setting, so I'm just going to keep dropping down the thickness on my pasta machine until I get down to the thinnest. So the baking paper just um, helps to stop this from happening. Time to build a fan fold. You know, this hardly ever happens to me unless I'm filming. Then it just decides to be a pain. Okay, stay on there.
Okay, okay. So, um, the width of my ribbon here is actually going to be the height of my cane. Um, so, there we go. So that will be um, the height of the cane, and this is the body of my fishy. So I'm just going to smooth out the one side here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's the little blend. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape this block into um, sort of a, a leaf fish shape. <laughs> Um, keeping in mind that for this particular fish his head is a different shade of blue so I'm going to leave the one side flat and then I'm going to pinch this um, these two sides sort of together and taper it into a point So I'm not worried about the send because um, there will be distortion regardless. So. Okay, dokie. Easy peasy. Let's put that aside. Okay. So the face of this fish is um, just a darker shade of blue, really. So I'm actually just going to, this is just some scrap blue, that, oopsie, it's got a lot of pink in it. Um, some blue that I have lying around on my desk and I'm just actually going to add co um, ultramarine blue and maybe even a bit of purple. Actually I might just add purple, I mind that. Um, if you wanted to make a blue darker, don't be tempted to add. I've lost my purple clay. Um, don't be tempted to add black because it will actually just make a really awful, um, like muddy blue color. It it really just doesn't work. Add um, purple. to be the face. Put that aside and I'll actually just now um, with my dark blue just make a little uh, face piece. <laughs> It's not quite big enough. I need to fill this cap here.
turkey. And now I'm just going to pinch this over here where the little mouth will be. What I sometimes like to do with the mouth is just cut a little, just make a little cut. Um, and then fill the, fill it with um, just a tiny little snake of um, translucent clay. That way it looks like the fishy has, you know, lips. just cut a little slice and then I just jiggled my blade so that it made a cavity. Um, I just want some translucent clay just behind me. So it really it's just a tiny little bit of um, translucent. Okay, so now we need to reduce this so that it's, um, you know, the right size to be the eye for this fish. I don't need to reduce the whole lot of it because I really just need a tiny bit. So keep reducing this one here. Okay, it's still a bit big, but I think I like it. It's a bit bigger. Okay, so to make a space for the eye to go into, I have tried a lot of different things, and I find that the thing that works the best is to actually um, 
cut the face off. <laughs> so find a, or using a, something to make this the spot where you want the eye to be, just mark it. So I've just put a little dot in the clay there. So now I'm actually going to cut um, sort of through the middle of that spot and then I'll use a, you know, a, a stick or a skewer or even a paintbrush or whatever you've got handy that's rounded and I'm just going to make a cavity in there. So now when I put it together, there's an eye hole. So, ha, an eye hole. Okay, so I'll cut this to the right size. Okay, so in the reducing process, it is more likely than not that the inside of this cane has gotten twisted because there's no registration lines. Um, so I can't see sort of what's happening from one end to the other. So just um, find where the little white spot is and then make sure that it's in the same place um, on the other end of the cane. Otherwise, I mean, if you don't care where it is, um, then that doesn't matter. But I like it to be sort of at the top. I like it to be like that with the little white flick towards the back of the body, well, towards the body. And I'll just make sure that on the other side, it's in the same direction. And then I can put the rest of the face back. And there it is. So if you don't make the um, little indent properly or, okay, I need some more of this. Um, or deep enough or whatever, then your eye will distort. So just be mindful of that. I feel like I don't have enough clay on the face here. Okay, the other thing that this fish has that we haven't put in here is it's got a little fin right here where the face and the body sort of come together. So I need to just, I'm going to use this piece that we cut out for the face and I'm just going to turn it into a fin. So basically just a square, a triangle. And then just to make sure that it um, stays visible in here, I'm just going to add a sheet of this face color um, on either side of the fin. So, just going to measure how much I need. I don't want the light color on this cutout piece to be on the light side so I actually want to just make sure that I flip it around so that um, the light part of the blend is towards the bottom and the dark part of the blend is towards the top. It just um, helps to keep it separate so that it doesn't all just bleed into one another. Okay, so I'm just going to 
add these little stripes. Okay, there we go. Um, now I'm going to do something similar um, to what I did with the eye. I'm going to just mark where I want this. And then I'm actually just going to cut that bit out. you make these cuts it's important to um, put things back where you found them basically just make sure that when you put it back um, put the cane back together that is you align everything the way it was so I'm just gonna make sure that this is a really sharp Okay, again, making sure that the light part of my fin is at the bottom. Ew. I might have this fin in the wrong spot. Oh well, that's where it's staying now. Ha. Okay, it might be a bit big as well. so confused. There we go. I'll put the body back together making sure that these cuts line back up. There we go. I know it's got to fit in here, which is quite subtle, but that's what I wanted. Okay, so that's the body of this fish done. So now I'm going to move on to the, um, the fins. The one at the top and the one at the bottom. turn this excuse me I'm gonna turn this back into um, well not back into but I'm gonna turn this into a ribbon as well
arms are ready for winter. This is ridiculous. Kidaki, holding time. Okay, so this is the fin that sits on top of the fish. <laughs> um, so what I want to do is I actually want to put some of the, I want to put some um, stripes in this or lines or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to pull out my trusty little credit card. Oh, it's not a credit card, but it's a credit card type card. And I'm just going to... Uh, make a cut with this Anything that's got a dull edge that's a little bit thick would do the trick so sometimes I use um, 
my blade folded into a bit of paper or business cards or um, I even sometimes use my um, the side of my ruler which works as well just depends on what you have on hand this over and do the same thing from the other side. Oops. Just going to flatten this so that it's the right height and um, stretch it out. So obviously I'm going to have quite a bit of this left over but that can't be helped. Um, although this is not just the, the, um, the top part here it's also um, just before the tail there's also a bit there so so while I'm reducing this um, I'm going to start shaping it as well so that it's um, fin-shaped. So, sort of, okay. I just need it a bit thinner and a bit longer. Oops. That uh, was not ideal. Okay, there we go, that's about right.
Okay, now this part I will make into the tail shape. So it's a bit more triangular. So this isn't actually the tail, it's just um, leading up to the tail, whatever. So I've um, just taken a slice off here to remove the pointy bit. So now I need to put the little white bit on um, the end of this, but first I think I'll do the fin from the bottom, for the bottom, whatever. So it's this blend here, and once again I need to stretch this into a ribbon and make a fin fold. Okay, so same with the um, same as with the top fin. I'm just going to put some stripes in this. I actually could have had a few more stripes in this one. It's too late now. Um, So if you want to um, increase the number of stripes, striations, whatever you want to call them, stretch this out, chop it in half, and then, oopsies, join the two halves together, and suddenly you have twice as many um, little stripes. So again, while I'm reducing this, I'm just going to shape it.
Let's go back, I think. There we go. So if I'm doing anything that you don't understand or if you don't understand why I'm doing something, um, you know, just just ask. So earlier I mentioned registration lines and um, this is what I meant. See these um, lines throughout the cane from the top to the bottom. They're what's called registration lines. And so if you have them on a round cane, for example, actually this one has some, you can see, you can, while you're reducing it, you can make sure that those lines stay straight which means that the cane is reducing nicely and that it's not distorting in the process. So that's what that means. little tail piece that I've lost. Here it is. Put that in there. And then we'll put the um, black and white tail on the end and then um, start packing it with some translucent. This time I'm not going to make a fan fold, but I am going to turn this into a ribbon. So let's do that quick. Hi Lynn, how are you? Okay, so this time instead of a fan fold, I'm going to make a bullseye cane, which is something that I don't actually do very often, but it's awesome. So instead of folding it, I'm actually going to roll it. And in this case, I want the white on the inside, so I'm going to start with the white. Um, when I do fan folds or jelly rolls or anything like that um, using the, this um, ribbon, I don't worry about both sides being, um, you know, straight or whatever. I just concentrate on one side. So when this side is fine, because this bit of clay is not um, always going to be perfectly... Um, 
you know perfectly symmetrical from one end to the other so as long as one end is um, nice and flush chances are you'll have a perfect jelly roll or band fold whatever it is you're doing This is actually enough black, so I'm not going to worry about that part. And there it is. It's a lovely little jelly roll. So you can see this side is really not um, as straight or as neat. So I can cut this off. Um, you know, it's not it's not necessary. And now I've got a perfect jelly roll. It's flat on both ends. Okay, um, moving on. I don't need, I mean, rather, I don't want this to be round. I actually want it square for the time being. So I'm just going to turn my circle into a square. And all I'm doing is I'm pressing here and here at the same time. And now I'm going to put those um, stripes into this as well. So it doesn't actually have to be square, it can be a bit rectangular. So I've got to remember because um, this is the top of my cane, I want to put the lines in this way and not this way, which would seem the logical way because that's the, the wide side. Um, because this is the tail, I actually just want these lines going in one direction. So I'm just going to put them really close together. Now the part that, um, the top of the lines rather, I'm going to pinch together and make into the same shape as this one here for the tail. the flat part of this to be the same width as this one so this has gotten too long so I need to squish it back together so we can make it wider I mean thinner, not necessarily smaller. Oh yeah, that's better. And 
there you have it. A little um was it a dory fish? What is it called? It? I will think about it in a minute. Okay, so now I think we are ready for um, some translucent clay. So the point of the translucent clay is to make sure that when we reduce this, all of these shapes stay where they are. So I want to fill in any sort of gaps. So here between the tail and the fins, I want to make sure that I get all of those spaces that are currently um, empty. I want to make sure that I put translucent clay in there so that when I go to reduce it, those spaces stay where they are. So if I can find one, oh, this would be a perfect example. So this is a very basic jellyfish. So um, in between each of these little finny things, um, what are they called? Legs, tentacles? Yes, tentacles. Um, there is a layer of translucent so that they each one of those remains, um, and of course the camera doesn't pick it up, so that they remain separated instead of just all becoming one thick solid line. So, not, not showing up. That's all right. I'm sure you know what I mean. Okay, translucent clay. I like to use, obviously Primo, but the white translucent. Sorry. Um, both of them are fine. But if you look at this, let me see if I can get this camera to focus. Um, if you use the, the standard translucent, it's a little bit yellow. Um, come on, focus. I guess. <laughs> um, then you get this little halo um, around the cane when it's baked. This is with the standard translucent. Um, you can reduce that by making your slices really, really thin, um, but you'll still have it. The other thing you can then do if you want to make sure that that you don't have it is to actually um, cut it off, which can be really tedious, especially if you're working in, you know, this size. So um, with the white translucent, it's not as apparent. Like it's still there, but it's it's less noticeable. Mm -hmm. So that's why I use the um, that's why I use the what do you call this? Uh, white translucent. So, I mean, it's just an option. You don't obviously have to use it if you don't do enough canes because, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. So now I'm just going to create. Um, I'm going to look at what shape I need. So here it's sort of a triangle in this part here. So I'm going to try and um, make a translucent piece of clay that fits into that shape. Probably a good idea to grab some wet paper. Um, and I'm going to just wipe my hands because I'm sure there's blue, and yellow, and black, and white. And all of that will show up in the um, translucent once it's baked. So I'm making this triangular shape.
So I want to keep the fins and this tail part separate. So I'm just adding as thin a piece as I can of um, translucent in there before I start filling the gaps. Now we'll go back to making this shape here. the first one.
Okay, um, now that the majority, well, all of the ones that I can spot just offhand of the gaps have been filled, I'm just going to take um, some more of the translucent. And I'm actually going to wrap just a thin sheet all the way around. I want to try and avoid um, air bubbles at this stage, well, at every stage, but especially at this stage. And I'm just going to actually add some more um, translucent um, in this gap here and the same at the bottom here so that it's sort of an oval shape, which just makes it easier to reduce.
I'm just going to repeat the process with this part here. Oopsie. And there we go, there's a little fishy cane. Um, it took a bit longer than what I expected, but there was a lot of blends in this one, so. Um, if, if you'd like to come back and watch me reduce it, I'll do that in the second part. But I think um, for tonight, I'm going to leave the talking there. And I will see you um, in about 10, 20 minutes maybe um, and I will get to reducing this it would also give my little fishy cane a, an opportunity to rest so that all the clay becomes um, the same temperature which would reduce distortion as well so once again thank you so much for joining me on this um, challenge and um, come back tomorrow for textures so we've played a bit with textures on some of the other days, um, but tomorrow I'll show you how to make some texture sheets um, for yourself if you don't want to or can't afford to buy some of the more expensive ones that are available on the market. So until then, I will leave you to be creative and hopefully catch you tomorrow. Bye.